Okay guys, I'm gonna go and uh, record another deck check in a moment, but first I need to grab some tea. Uh, do you guys need any beverages? Balaam? Coffee. Uh, milk? Sugar? No. Make it black as liquid shadow itself. Then fill it with tears of children. Okay. Uh, Aleb? Do we have any ale? Nope, you drank it all. Then get me Katra on the rocks. Hello and welcome everyone, this is Kalabovich coming to you with another episode of Deck Check. Now today you're kind of getting two decks for the price of one. Uh, both have some, hmm, let me say maybe, name-wise connotations to Magic the Gathering games, days of old. Uh, but let me, let me maybe ju well, just jump right in, okay? So... Uh, some time ago, I have built a deck that is uh, that was called Survival of the Fittest. Survival of the Fittest was a Magic the Gathering card back from Exodus in 1998. That was a green enchantment uh, that said uh, pay green and discard a creature to get any creature from your deck and uh, reshuffle your deck, obviously. So uh, this deck is named that because, uh, well, it is running a lot of one-off units that you can fetch off of Reweave and Necessary Measures. So this is a Carandon deck, which means it's Time Justice Shadow. Uh, kind of mid-rangey, built on a couple of pillars, one of them being Even-Handed Golem. Obviously, all your all cards in your deck have to cost 2, 4, 6, 8, etc. Or 0, even. Uh, based on Hojin Crownbreakers for some early game. Uh, then you have your Sandstorm Titans. And those are the only 4 of units in the deck, the rest is 15 uh, so-called silver bullets, or rather one-offs, that you can fetch via Reweave, which, uh, which is a green spell uh, that says sacrifice a unit to play a unit from your deck with the same cost or less and shift it. Which means if you sacrifice a Sandstorm Titan, you, get, you can get a Steward of the Past if you want to get rid of the opponent's Void. Or you can get Vara and screw them even further. Also, in this deck are featured four of Necessary Measures, that is a, another green spell that says either kill an enemy unit if it's their only unit, or draw a unit from your deck if it is the only one with that name. Uh, which means if you have 15 one-offs, you can just fetch one of them and play it soon after. So this also has a lot of come into play effects, uh, some removal, etc, etc. But then came a moment where I thought to myself, hmm, also, hmm, can we make this even memeier? And a little voice in my head, or, or maybe it was Balab in the other room, said, yes, you can. And uh, hmm. there is a unit-based combo uh, that it can be fit into even decks. Uh, let me, let me switch the version and show you. So, Katra on the rocks, yeah, you might have guessed. It is based around Katra the Devoted. It is a four-cost Xenon Xenon 3-3 cultist that says Life Force, which means each time you gain health, your units get plus one, plus one. The combo is about combining this with Razor Quill, a 4 cost shadow unit, a 2-4, pay 2 and twist Razor Quill, which means permanently give it plus 1 attack, negative 1 health, to deal 1 damage to the enemy player and gain 1 health. So the combo here is, each time you activate Razor Quill, the opponent gets dealt 1 damage, all your units get plus 1, plus 1, Razor Quill gets uh, plus 1, minus 1, which effectively gives him plus 2 attack, plus 0 health. So you buff all your units and you start trickling the opponent's life total down. The downside is that you have to pay two uh, to activate Razor Quill, which means you need additional units such as Stained Honors, not Horrors, Honors, which say which are two cost shadow units uh, with one attack and three health, uh, 
that say your twist abilities cost one less to use and yes they can cost zero so the whole combo is having two of these in play katra razor quill and then just clicking on razor quill 25 times give or take uh, so yes, I had to make some adjustments and this is still an even-handed golem deck, which means all cards cost 0, 2, 4, 6 or 8 or are power cards. So this deck has no market whatsoever. It has a lot of silver bullets, which you can retrieve via necessary measures and reweave. Um, it is missing Hojins, it is missing uh, Null Blades. It is missing a couple of other things that were one-offs. So Katra, well, obviously, because Katra the Devoted on the rocks, because she is drinking something with ice, perhaps. Uh, but on the rocks has also a second meaning. Uh, the rock was uh, an old Magic the Gathering archetype. It was a green-black or black-green control deck based on units. And this is, well, maybe not black-green, but it, it is uh, three color, but it is also a uh, semi-control deck based on units as well but that's that's the whole reason it's named catron rocks also name sounds cool okay so i have also one other big change or two other big changes in this deck from the previous list uh, is the inclusion of four of imperial loyalists i'll get to it in a moment and getting some last chances to get your combo going Okay, so these were some general thoughts about this deck. Now let me maybe go through uh, the deck itself. Uh, this time I will start off with spells. So we have three last chances, a zero cost shadow spell that says draw a unit from your void and the unit gets void bound, which means it cannot leave the void any further. Uh, this is necessary for you to grab back your units that do a lot or are part of the of the combo like for example if you played stained honor on turn two you can then get it back for zero to combo in the future turns um, four of annihilate a two cost uh, shadow fast spell that says kill a unit with a single faction and these are paired with four desecrates a two cost shadow shadow slow spell that says kill a unit any unit but you take three damage and there is Severin the Mad Mage here in the uh, in the artwork as well I think uh, so you need that removal to stay afloat and these are the mm, the easiest removal to play honestly especially in an even uh, even handed golem deck if it wasn't an even handed golem deck I might think about including some suffocates as well but the even handed golem is very necessary for the success of this deck uh, then we have four of reweaves. These are, uh, as I already explained, two cost justice slow spells that say sacrifice a unit to play a unit from your deck with the same cost or less and shift it. And all the permanent effects uh, stay in play, all the fast effects stay in play. There are a lot of... Uh, uh, a lot of small intricacies when it comes to reweave, but I'll explain them when it comes to the units themselves. Next up, we have four of safe return. This is the almost the dark return of choice that says that is a two cost uh, Combry fast spell. Put one of your units into your hand and give it plus one plus one. So this usually works like a kind of worse uh, dark return, although it works for even hon even handed golem decks for two reasons. First off, its cost is even, and second off, you can't return golem from your void. You can just return it from play and replay it for additional uh, uh, summon effects, etc, etc. And for of necessary measures, which you usually use to draw a unit from your deck. But it is also sometimes, especially against some control decks, the kill an enemy unit, if it's their only unit, comes into play more often than you might think. For example, against the lonely Heart of the Vault or Joe or something like that. Now, the power base here could be better, probably. It includes uh, some crests, some banners, and some basic sigils without uh, any means of getting those basic sigils uh, like via cargo or seek power because these cost, uh, these cards costs are odd. Uh, but remember uh, the there is a lot of uh, ice there are a lot of ice bolts in the meta game so the opponent might help you with uh, fixing your power and your influence anyway 
Anyway, let's get to the units themselves. We have a one of Desert Marshal that is a two cost ambush Cumbrai gunslinger uh, that on summon uh, says you may silence another unit and this effects, uh, effect comes into play more often than you might think. It is a very very good effect. The ambush also comes into play more often than not. Uh, four of even-handed golem that is a two cost uh, neutral 2-2 golem with void bound that on summon if you have no odd cost cards in your deck you get to draw two cards if you get to reweave that card into play or reweave an even-handed golem into another even-handed golem you get to draw two additional cards if you safe return it to your hand and replay it you get to draw two more cards and this is the uh, I wouldn't say it's main engine of the deck, but this helps that uh, helps a lot. And usually, if you start with at least two power and an even-handed golem, in 90% of the cases you should keep that hand, especially if you can play golem on turn two. Um, remember, right now it is void bound, so you cannot return it from your void with last chance. And if the opponent silences silences it. It loses void bound, but it has no additional benefits on summon, so you don't want to return it anyway, usually. Okay, next up are four of stained honors. Uh, these are here instead of Hojins. I mean, Hojins are much, much, much better, especially that this deck is running four reweaves and four safe returns to trigger Hojins' um, renown ability. And this is the main point of contention between these two lists. If I could include four Hojins, or at least some Hojins in here as well, that would be amazing, but I don't want to go lower than four of Stained Honors. On the other hand, two Stained Honors because you're tutoring a lot, and two Hojins is also an option. Next up we have Unwavering Exorcist. This is a card you usually do not uh, see in decks. That is a 2 cost justice uh, unit with 3 attack and 2 health. You are immune to damage from night. This effect does not come into play as much as you would think, although the summon kill an enemy curse does. And there are a lot of curses in this game uh, being played, like Avigraft, like Curse of Provocation, it even has curse in its name like permafrost and it seems we're gonna get more and more curses in the coming uh, Flame of Zelta expansion as well. Okay, so these are 10 two cost units. Next up we have four of Imperial Loyalist. Now uh, previously, <laughs> previously on deck check, uh, previously in this list I had four of uh, Sandstorm Titans to go very mid-range on the opponents. This deck list is more combo E, which means uh, I want to run four of Imperial Loyalists here. This is a four cost Justice uh, Warrior for attack three health with Pledge, and that Pledge may come in handy once in a while, but it also has Renown. Play another unit of your choice from your deck with cost equal to or less than that spell or weapon that pledged this out. This means if you have Imperial Loyalist in play and you safe return it, you get to play usually even handed Golem or Stained Honor, and uh, and you have your Imperial Loyalist back in your hand, ready to get renowned yet again. Also, uh, you might want to, from time to time, if you are about to combo, you can desecrate and or annihilate your Imperial Loyalist to get a two-cost unit into play as well. And that saved my bacon once or twice so far. At least once that I remember of vaguely. Uh, also, Reweave is the best combo with Imperial Loyalist because it, the, these two cards get you a 2 cost and a 4 cost. But remember that 4 cost uh, from Reweave is shifted, which means you cannot interact it with in any way. That means if you're uh, renowning and reweaving for your combo of Katra, Razor Quill and Double Stained Honor, you usually should grab Katra and let it stay shifted for a while, because if Razor Quill is shifted, you have to wait three turns to combo. And usually you want to play necessary measures to get your Razor Quill. Um, and you want to reweave your Imperial Loyalist to get Katra. That is the usual way to do it. Katra in and of itself, I mean, life force, what gains you life here? Razor Quill gains you life, Sabertooth Pride Leader gains you life, 
Vara gains you life, Grenva gains you life. So there are a couple of other ways to trigger uh, Katra just to buff your units against, uh, I don't know, aggro midrange decks, uh, just to buff your board, just to go above and beyond. Next up, another way of triggering Renown on Imperial Loyalist or just making your units bigger is Minotaur Plate Maker, an amazing 4-cost double justice Minotaur. 2-5 with double damage that says pay 2 and twist Minotaur Plate Maker to play, play a plus 2 plus 2 weapon on one of your other units that isn't wielding a weapon. And that weapon is actually Crownwatch Longsword that is a 2 cost. Which means if you use this ability on Imperial Loyalist, you get to trigger its renown, you get to uh, grab an even handed golem or a stained honor from your deck. Next up is Razor Quill. Usually you just want to run it out for the combo, but it can also just deal a couple of points of damage or get rid of uh, the opponent's face aegis or something like that. Next up, uh, Sabertooth Pride Leader, a 4 cost time time 3 5 kitty. Hi, Marisa. With Ambush, that on summon either kills an enemy relic or lets you gain 3 health. Uh, first is usually against cards like uh, Chains or even, uh, even Power Stones can come in handy. And the other one is great against aggro. Sandstorm Titan, currently running just as a one-off uh, that you can grab to... Uh, well, I think everyone knows this card. It is a 4-cost overstated 5-6 Endurance Justice unit, which uh, this allows units to fly. Uh, next up we have Stewie of the Past, a 4 cost double shadow 3-5 deadly radiant that on summon silences all units in the enemy void and uh, gets rid of all shenanigans, all void based shenanigans that the opponent might be running. Thrashing Dune Worm, now this comes into, uh, this effect comes into play, wow, it is great, it is a 4 cost double time 3-4 worm. Your units with killer have plus one plus one, but amplify two, give one of your units killer, and remember you can give killer even to this thrashing dune worm, and the amplify works even if you reweave it, and then you can use all those uh, units with killer to get rid of uh, the opposing side of the board. Next up we have Umbrin Voidbringer, uh, four cost shadow shadow two two. Flying Berserking Gradient, that an onslaught, which means if you have previously attacked uh, on the turn in question, draw a unit from your void. So this is an additional last chance, but this is uh, within a unit that you can reweave, that you can necessary measure, so you can get this Umbran Voidbringer in some other ways. So you can get back your uh, Minotaur Plate Makers or Loyalists or SST or other, other good units. Next up we have Vara Vengeance Seeker, a 4 cost double shadow 3-3, three, three, life-stealing scion, nothing can have Aegis anymore, and on summon the enemy player must choose, sacrifice a unit or give Vara plus 2 plus 2 and deadly. Now there is a, an interaction between uh, Reweave and getting Vara off of Reweave that some people are still not aware of. If If a unit is shifted, and if you grab a unit from Reweave it is shifted, it cannot be interacted in any way. And the summon ability is an interaction on Vara itself. So if you don't want to sacrifice your unit, you have to click on Vara. Which means, if you look at it from the other way, if you cannot click on Vara because she is shifted, the enemy player has to sacrifice a unit. So reweaving for Vara is actually uh, one way of uh, getting the opponent to sacrifice a unit even if they don't want to. Um, some people are still unaware of this and are clicking and are submitting bug reports, I'm guessing. So yeah, but it is what it is. Next up we have Nash, Desert Prince. Uh, the, the hero that is getting a third card any, any day soon, any day now. That is a 6 cost double justice 6-6 six, six warrior. At the start of your turn play a 1-1 one, one Arana with killer. And on summon you get to put each unit with flying on the bottom of its owner's deck. And remember if some of your units have flying, for example Umbran Voidbringer, unfortunately you have to bring it down as well. So be careful of that, but it can, it is very good in against justice based flyers, uh, Huru, etc, etc. Next up we have Grinva, Breaker of Will, and yes, that Minotaur breaks a lot of wills. It is a 6 cost double Karendon, 6-6 six, six Endurance Lifesteal, Gunslinger Minotaur. 
that are in power, which means each time a power comes into play on your side of the board, you get to play Cowardice on an enemy unit, and Cowardice is a shadow curse that um, says the cursed unit cannot block. Yes, this is a powerhouse in mid-game, uh, can turn off a lot of uh, mid-range decks, a lot of aggro decks, especially if you can return it later with Last Chance or Umbra and Voidbringer, you usually have the game <laughs> the game solved, one might say, because this deck is a puzzle. There are two units left, one of them is Mystic Ascendant, a six cost, uh, sorry, a six cost time Mystic, just a lowly 4-4, but on empower, on empower it gets plus 2 plus 2 and you get to draw a card. Which means you don't want to just play it out on turn 6, you usually want to wait for the turn in which you can play this and play a power card. If that power card has scout, which means if you play a crest, you get to scout first and you can choose whether to keep that card on top or send it to the bottom. If you keep it on top, you get to draw it. If you send it to the bottom, you get to draw something else. And rounding out the whole deck list is a Zindel Revealed, an 8 cost double Xenon 7 7 Radiant, which says when one of your units hits the enemy player, you get to draw the top card of their deck and reduce its cost by 2. And on summon, you also get to play 2 1 1 Halichi with Deadly and Unblockable. Uh, Yes, that is, uh, that is a way to seal the game. And once again, there are a lot of one-offs in this deck because you can draw them, you can tutor for them using necessary measures. Now, this deck it has a slightly lower win rate than the previous one, than the first one I have shown, but uh, there will be uh, links to both deck lists in the video description below, so don't worry, you can choose whether you want to combo or just go mid-range slash control or tempo control on the opponent on your opponents um, i think uh, the main reason is actually that this deck has stained honors instead of hojans or i might just be drawing much worse when i'm playing katra on the rocks also the other deck list is running what null blades hojans and maybe a couple of other things uh, but the bulk of the deck is the same and having having a mid-rangey deck that draws a lot of cards off of even-handed golem that can take care of all the opposing questions because you do have a lot of answers here uh, that can also assemble a one turn kill combo with katra razor quill and double saint honor this is the this is the one to uh, hit combo that i like to run in my decks so we can shift gears from a unit based, just aggro the opponent down or tempo the opponent down to, oh wait, right now I'm playing a combo and one turn killing the opponent. Does it work in games? Well, sometimes it does, uh, not as often as I would like, but there are a lot of ways of getting your one of Katra and one or one of Razor Quill. Also having one of Katra, one of Razor Quill, even just two of Saint Honor is just four cards in the deck. Well, right now six, but let's say four cards. You need four slots in the deck to run the combo. I think that is that is enough. You can sacrifice uh, consistency that you can sacrifice just for the sake of having the option of one turn killing an, an unsuspecting opponent that is trying to combo off themselves, for example, or just twiddling the, their thumbs and playing very slow. Okay, so this is it for the uh, deck building portion. As I said, the Survival of the Fittest version has a much higher win rate than this one, but both seem to be doing quite alright, even on uh, even on Master Ladder. Okay, let's uh, let's now go through and see, go through to the games and see how this deck is usually running. And the first game is against Space, and the first hand, well, it has Katra and Desert Marshal and Desecrate that we cannot play, and Last Chance that we cannot play. So honestly, I think this is a ship back. Yes, and the other one uh, also only has two power, nothing you can play early on, so unfortunately this is a ship back to six. Now here we have four power, almost all influence, and two four cost units, which means I would love to get something, get a good two cost off of this Crest of Vengeance. And having an even-handed golem on the top of my deck means that uh, I essentially did not mulligan because I get to, get to draw an additional card 
so yes, this card advantage is keeping me in the game. Now let's see what we can draw here. Uh, another Sigil and Katra. Uh, having Katra in play and uh, an Imperial Loyalist, sorry, not in play, in hand, means that I want to try and combo out. Uh, what can what can we get here? Combri Banner. Yes, I'm keeping that because it's the second uh, time source, and that might come into play, might come in handy. Also, I might think of just letting this three three go through, and me drawing that. Uh, a Maran Stinger. This means I would like to block one or the other, and I am opting to block uh, the teacher as to not get disciplinary weighed. And those scorpion traps, I think I can just go through those scorpions. Yes, even if I <laughs> even if I get to draw two already. Okay, let's play Minotaur Plate Maker and stop the opponent in their tracks uh, for one more turn. Uh, at least hope to. Another Amaran Stinger. So once again we have the option of letting uh, Stinger through and getting five more scorpions into our deck or letting the opponent play disciplinary weights on us. Remember, disciplinary weights is also a curse, which means if you get to reweave or look for your uh, your exorcist, you can get rid of that as well. Okay, only even hand golem, which means I cannot last chance it. Uh, Crest of Vengeance, let me take a look. Time Sigil, we don't need it. I just want to play a 4-3 and try to stabilize the board. I mean, the opponent can start attacking with those 1-1 one, one Scorpions. 2-2 two, two Scorpions, because they played Zen Obelisk. And yes, we are taking 4 damage now, but we can play some blockers in uh, the on the following turns. A Zendel, yes, that is something I would like to ramp up to. And here I am getting probably an even-handed golem. I mean, if I had disciplinary weights, I would go for unwavering exorcist. But right here, I'm just drawing two cards. Necessary measures, nice, and Xenon banner, which means I would, I could combo out in a couple of turns, probably, maybe. It is possible. I would also need to get a lot of power to to do that in one turn. I'm thinking of just blocking uh, one of the scorpions with even. And the golem and getting. I could get Sabertooth Pride Leader to get rid of that Zen Obelisk. I could get uh, Desert Marshal to turn one of those scorpions uh, uh, off. Uh, but yes, I opted to go for Sabertooth Pride Leader. And right now, the plan is to block one of the scorpions. Obliterate goes here, sure. So we are taking a ton of damage right now. Seven damage. Uh, leaving me just down to 4 health, but I think if I can play that Sabertooth Pride Leader, uh, maybe... Hmm, do I have any 2 costs there as well? I do not think so. I think this is just uh, me playing that Pride Leader and either getting rid of their Obelisk or uh, gaining some health. Now let's see which version I opted to go for. Uh, yes, getting rid of their Obelisk. And blocking their two attacking unit, uh, two attack units, and just uh, going down to, <laughs> going down to very low two health. Health. Grenade and drone. Okay. Scorpion trap. That's not nice, opponent. But at least I got to eat power, and we can play a Zindel. And both me and the opponent have five units in play. Now, if the opponent is attacking, I think I would like to block one of their scorpions with my 3-5 kitty. Uh, that way I can return it with either Umbran Voidbringer or a safe return. No, I'm not opting to do that. Oh wait, I am opting to do that. As to gain some health and not lose to Torch. The opponent is, does seem to have some fast spells there, but I'm not sure what which ones are those. Tokus Waystone Harvester, sure. And twisting that once, okay. Uh, I think I could either attack with one or both. I could also just play Katra, uh, get the kitty back, regain some health, make my units bigger, have two blockers. Uh, yes, I think that's what I'm going for. So first play Katra, yes. Gain some health off of Sabertooth Pride Leader. Up to 5, not die to Torch. 
give all my units plus one plus one attack for 15 get to draw two cards from the opponent's deck and yes that is the end of game one so that was kind of mid-range against mid-range with uh, me having the option of playing some silver bullets as well on to game two against Alexei Chizhov yeah one power hands not really what I want for myself four power hands uh, hand with the ability to play everything we don't have double green yet for necessary measures or Grinva or a couple of other things a couple of other things no I think these are the only ones let me just double check yes and also Minotaur plate maker so necessary measures Minotaur plate maker and uh, and a Grinva breaker of will okay so let's start off with some power annihilate yes it is good to have removal in hand what is the opponent playing though what is the opponent playing crest of fury that might mean they're going for something rather aggressive but usually that means fire time primal control saber tooth pride leader is gonna be good because it gains us some health or can get rid of a permafrost as well and that is what I'm going for right now now all will be revealed whether the opponent is just playing a slow opening of yetis no they're playing fire time primal drawing some more cards yes that's that pride leader crest of mystery getting necessary measures I think I want to put it on the bottom because I don't have second justice I might also think of running uh, desert marshal out right now at the end of the opponent's turn especially if they play a merchant to have the option of playing xenon banner non-depleted and playing my sandstorm titan and or i mean or saber tooth pride leader out uh, the opponent's thinking on which power to play probably opponent opponent crest of impulse depleted so no merchants for them putting that one on the bottom and in this case yes I am opting to play Desert Marshal unfortunately the opponent has a stop and a way of interacting here and are they gonna torch it yes they are going to torch it which means Zenon Banner comes into play depleted unfortunately fortunately we drew even hands the golem and play Zenon Banner right now to have our annihilate power open as well then we can well we cannot play minotaur plate maker because we don't have double green but we can play sandstorm titan that is a very good very good threat the opposing sandstorm titan can be gotten rid of rapidly with with just this annihilate then we can attack the opponent for two i also drew just a sigil but i would like to run a sandstorm titan out first and then play minotaur plate maker yes as i said then play a power have six power use minotaur plate maker on one of my units probably sandstorm titan so that it cannot get obliterated ice bolted or uh, or uh, smuggled with uh, uh, with gun down and then on six if i draw yet another power i can play mystic ascendant play another power draw a card make mystic ascendant a six six so yes we do have some options we do have some card draw options we have some playing big units uh, option we have we are just going mid-range here against a rather controlling deck and trying to outdraw them as well now what are you going to do opponent and do you have any additional power if they go for banner now that means that is the card they got from the market if not well we'll see we'll see they can also go for stuff like Zalchi crest of wisdom that is not a banner up or down where are we going we're going up okay another even handed goal but I think I'm going for the option I uh, thought of previously which means Minotaur plate maker play a weapon here attack with both we don't care about that uh, even-handed golem anymore unless I draw a safe return or a reweave but rather not 
opponent uh, plus one de spells dealing plus one damage is much more uh, much more meaningful for them as for example they can now torch the uh, torch minotaur plate maker and yes that's what they're going for but we we got a we got a weapon off of that so all's good man it's all, it's all good man uh, yes two torches already and a sandstorm titan and they are taking nine so they are at 14 and we have nine attack in play we can draw two cards off of even handed golem uh, so yes things are looking on the up and up the question is what is the opponent playing and of hostilities okay that's a warp spell which means the opponent is also probably running uh, what was that called uh, garden of omens to reweave uh, sorry not reweave to uh, resurface that uh, yes, um, I can get back a unit, but I don't have anything great there. 7-8 uh, is not contested, so we can smack the opponent in two turns. We can also just, if the opponent blocked with the 2-2, for example, we could have played necessary measures and killed at 5-6. But right now I think I just want to go for necessary measures and get something into play, or go for Imperial Loyalist, yes. Yes, I see why now, because next turn I can uh, I can play last chance on Minotaur Plate Maker, uh, replay Minotaur Plate Maker, give a plus two plus two weapon onto Imperial Loyalist, make it a six five, get an, another even handed golem, or maybe just breaking a curse or silencing an enemy unit. Well, there are a lot of things that could happen. I can also, if I draw power, I can go Mystic Ascendant and draw something. This looks very devious, like the opponent has uh, some other things to get rid of my titan. Um, that is why I opted just to just to get rid of my even-handed golem right here, right now. Okay, and they're getting two cards, which means it's probably snowball or um, or treasure trove. We're gonna see in a turn or two. Now, am I going for that option? I think that option that I have said uh, on the previous turn is quite good, as we have two six attack units right now. We also get to draw two more cards. Yeah, there are no curses on our units right now. This also means that necessary measures can get us another, uh, another <laughs> even-handed golem, because it's our third, and we only have one left in our deck. Okay, let's attack with both. If the opponent wants to double block the 7-8, they go down to 1. I am, sorry, I am not playing power right now because I, next turn I can play Mystic Ascendant and play a power. And if they double block here, I think I want to get rid of Heart of the Vault uh, because Annihilates are additional options for me to get rid of that 5-6. Okay, we have advantage on the board. The question right now is just what is the opponent going to do? The opponent has to either play two blockers or get rid of two of my units or gain some health. I mean, they do have some options for sure. Like even another uh, Heart of the Vault getting rid of my 2-2 is a big stopper here. Yes, they're playing a unit, getting something from their market. Playing what else? Playing a Snowball for two damage here. Okay, do they have a hailstorm? Yes, they do have a hailstorm, so they're quite efficiently clearing up the board, and now they're doing the attacks. Grinva Breaker of Will. Okay, that's an amazing unit. Uh, it is going to be very difficult for the opponent to get rid of it if they are not running, for example, uh, Ice Bolts right now. It also cannot get permafrosted. The opponent is getting another uh, Fate card, which means it's either a dragon or another snowball. And if it is potentially another snowball, I cannot block here. I don't want my Grinva to die to yet another snowball. And what is the opponent doing here? I mean, we do have a lot of options. Uh, we could attack and go for Umbran Voidbringer. Uh, we could go for Mystic Ascendant. Yeah, they're playing Heart of the Vault right now. Dealing some damage here hoping to draw something that deals four, but they did not. So I'm just playing my Mystic Ascendant uh, to draw a card and uh, make the opponent opponent's unit uh, not be able to block. Just stack for six with Grinva, and there we go. So no equivocate, no nothing.
Okay, that was a good game. That showcased the versatility of this deck quite good. Uh, let's now get, get to game three. And here we are, game three against Alter Ego. Uh, this hand does not do a lot. You have to know how to redraw in this deck, unfortunately. For example, this hand, we have two power. We have Scout, which means we can draw half a power. <laughs> Uh, draw half a card off of this. We can we can try and put uh, a power on top. We do have an Annihilate, we have a Desert Marshal, we have Reweave, so we do have some options. But you could, can go both ways with this hand. I opted to keep it. Uh, yes. And let's see, I mean, we are also going second, so the additional card draw is perfect as well. I want to start off with Crest of Vengeance and Vara. I think Vara goes to the bottom. We don't have double shadow. And we can search for her with necessary measures or with Reweave. So we do have those options. Uh, Desecrate. Yes, I would like another piece of removal. Thank you very much. Uh, we are playing against uh, a deck that is looking quite slow so far. And the hope is uh, against slow decks to either out grind them with cards or set up your turn so that you can just combo everything out and is that what i'm going for right now am i i'm thinking of going for katra i'm thinking of going for just some proactive uh, stuff think caleb think think caleb think do you want to go for sandstorm titan or do you want to go for something bigger? I could also go for Imperial Loyalist and try to set the combo off. No, sorry, I can't. I have four copies of that. And yes, in the end, I went for Katra. Okay. Uh, so yes, uh, the opponent is stuck on four and has not played any cards yet, which means I can try to combo everything out onto the board. There is a Stained Honor here as well. And I'm just calculating what can I do, how can I do it. Yes, I'm also thinking, no, I am I could Desert Marshal, but I'm leaving that for a future turn. And right now, safe return. Yes, let's, keep, let's get safe return here. And I'm playing Stained Honor as well, because I can... Um, I can probably safe return a piece of the combo if the opponent is running some massive removal. That is something we can annihilate, sure. Sure, 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 sure. Attack for one, because we can. And I think I can set off the combo quite soon. I mean, if I play Razor Quill now, have safe return open, uh, if the opponent wants to wipe the board, I just get uh, Razor Cool back. If the opponent plays something that does not impact the board, I can run a Nia. Yeah, that does not impact the board. So right now, end of turn, I can Desert Marshal, silence that. I can play Katra. I can play Reweave on Desert Marshal, giving me the second uh, Stained Honor. And just OTKing the opponent. And yes, I think they saw what is going on. Okay, so this is the OTK for all of you who waited for, for this game. Okay, fortunately managed to do that. Now let's get to the decklist for a moment. Okay, so once again, this is Katra on the rocks. This deck can for sure be improved. Um, if you don't like clicking a lot and running OTK combos, you can also go with the survival of the fittest decklist that is included in the description of the video, probably somewhere below. Uh, but yes, you can substitute some of these cards for other cards. The cards I would uh, I would like to keep for sure are Desert Marshal, at least one Imperial Loyalist, Plate Maker, Pride Leader. Um, not sure about Stewie, but Thrashing Dune Worm for sure, Vara for sure, and the High End for sure as well. You have some wiggle room, you can go lower on last chances, you can go lower on safe returns by one or two. Um, and you can include some other cards, I mean, this is... Uh, this is just mix and match, just... I wonder if there is an option of combining both lists, uh, if uh, going down to two Saint Honor is viable, if going up on some Hojans is viable as well. But remember, if you're running Hojans in this version, you should up your Justice Sigil count by one or two. 
and this deck has enough duels that it's you either have all your influence or you do not okay i hope you enjoyed the deck explanation and the games this is going to be it for this video uh, thank you very much for watching and remember if you're enjoying this show uh, just um, just subscribe to Team Rank Stars YouTube channel. There should be a red button somewhere somewhere around around the frame. Okay. Once again, thanks for watching and see you on one of my streams. Kalabovich out.